All right, we are back once again, Kurt and Dan, this time joined by the, the leading man of, of all elite wrestling, Tony Khan. Tony, thanks so much for making some time for us. Thank you very much, Dan. It's great to be here with you and Kurt, and uh, I'm excited about AEW on Long Island tomorrow night, Wednesday night Dynamite every week on TNT, and uh, Friday night Rampage every week on TNT also, and uh, we have the great support of the best wrestling fans in the world up here in New York, and I'm very excited to be on Long Island tomorrow. You know, Tony, I drive past that arena every time when I'm coming into work, and one of the first things that they had up on the arena was advertising that dynamite and rampage that you drive past night the big cm punk is there on the screen and it really is something special that it's coming to the building you know you ran arthur ash for the first time a wrestling event was there this isn't the first wrestling event but it feels like one of the it is one of the first wrestling events in ubs so let's talk about that and running this building and running new york what can fans expect what's it like for you to be here and in this building uh, tomorrow night it may not be the first wrestling show at UBS, but it is the biggest crowd anybody's drawn at UBS by, by a lot. And uh, we have the best fans in the world, and these great wrestling fans are going to turn up at UBS tomorrow and, uh, and pushing towards a sellout, which is amazing for our debut on Long Island. And we've had such great support in New York. We had been waiting to come here through the pandemic. We had been wrestling on TNT every Wednesday in Jacksonville, Florida, with great fans physically distanced outdoors. It was the only place through the pandemic you could see wrestling on TV with fans, and we did it safely. Fans outdoors in their own pods, like a drive-in movie, and we had no transmissions because we did it safe, and we put a 1,000 people spread out all over the place with families in an amphitheater, and we did the best wrestling TV through the pandemic. We got through it, and now, if you haven't seen it, we have the hottest programs in wrestling, and it's ready to pick up now. Uh, you know, we've been building towards these episodes tomorrow night and next week. We've got so much happening in the world of AEW. Next week is the Winter is Coming show in Dallas, which is one of the biggest events of the year. This is the last dynamite, and so much is going to happen ahead of Winter is Coming on Long Island, on TNT every Wednesday, and, and we're 8 p.m. Eastern. We start on TNT tomorrow. Uh, we're building towards Brian Danielson versus the world champion Hangman Page in the champion Hangman's first defense. Brian Danielson is not only probably the best wrestler in the world right now, Brian Danielson is, in my opinion, the best wrestler of all time. And I am so excited for Brian Danielson versus Hangman Page for the world title. Brian Danielson is an insane competitor, and he's so competitive. He has been wrestling every week ahead of this match. And it's a treat for the fans to get to watch Brian Danielson wrestle every week. And he's gonna wrestle the hometown hero on Long Island, one of the most popular wrestlers in AEW, John Silver versus Brian Danielson tomorrow night on Wednesday Night Dynamite on TNT. It's a huge match. Tony, you talked about being excited to, to be in New York and obviously us being in New York City, we're a little, uh, you know, obviously this is a great place to watch wrestling. How just can, can you bring me through how important and you know strategy wise picking the buildings I mean I was in attendance at the show at Arthur Ashe Stadium it was such a cool environment just because it was an environment that really few had experienced before being in that kind of tennis stadium you've obviously gotten creative but what, take me into planning these New York City events and what exactly you're looking for putting them on well I really appreciate you saying that Dan it, it's been a great uh you know, fun process. And actually, before the pandemic, we had identified buildings we wanted to run. Uh, I had found Arthur Ashe Stadium, no joke. I had Googled stadiums with a roof, looking for the best stadium in the world with a roof that I knew we could run a show in safely. And I, Arthur, you know, alphabetically, Arthur Ashe Stadium was the top. And I looked and I was like, wait, this is one of the best stadiums in the world. It's right at the top. How has nobody ever done a show? Go here is there some reason we can't and i asked uh, our director of live events rafael morphy who's from here you know lives up here in new york and and has great local knowledge and has run uh lots of touring and has, has been a live event director for wwe in the past and rafael had, had told me nobody's ever done it, it but, but i think it's we, something we could pull off and he had some great relationships he made some introductions i've gone up uh to arthur ash and visited and they're such great people and they've been great partners 
uh, the USTA and the folks at the Arthur Ashe Stadium, Danny and everyone there have been so great to work with. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to hopefully returning for another AEW Grand Slam at uh, Arthur Ashe. It's, it's so, such, a, such a cool venue. And right. so that's how that kind of came together. And I wanted to bring AEW to New York and the market. And that to me, when I saw that, that was the perfect way to do it. So I've had that in mind for years. And then UBS, Raphael, again, had these relationships. And uh, it, you know when we were putting our schedule together, uh, he and I earmarked this is the really a dream building to run. We kind of thought we might be the first wrestling show in the building, uh, but we, it, wor it worked out that uh, we're one of the very first events really in this building, but we're not the first wrestling show. But uh, we are the most attended wrestling show so far, and we're going to do great ticket sales as everyone's going to see uh, tomorrow night, Wednesday night dynamite. That being said, do you plan to run a Barclays, a garden, a baseball stadium in the future? What, what, what's stadium. next here in New York for you guys? Like, what, what, where else can we go? I love the venues right now. I mean, UBS, this is going to be beautiful tomorrow night. What an amazing venue. And they've been such great hosts already as we're getting loaded in for tomorrow night's show. And so for Wednesday Night Dynamite, we've done UBS now tomorrow night. And we've done Arthur Ashe Stadium. Uh, we have a great relationship. Um, with the Prudential Center, and, and I think that's tremendous in Newark also. So covering all these different areas around the New York market, and of course, Arthur Ashe Stadium in the city, I love the relationships we have, and I'm focused on that right now. And I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, tomorrow night, Wednesday night, Dynamite on Long Island at UBS. And then again, we're back in less than a month in Newark at Prudential Center in the market. And then again, I think, we, you know, I look forward to running more shows. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll be back again for Grand Slam next year. Tony, let's move from the settings to, to the people involved. And the AEW roster has its share of guys from around here. And we talked to two of them earlier this week in uh, Eddie Kingston and MJF. Polar opposites, it seems like, personality-wise and character-wise. Um, obviously, Santana and Ortiz uh, from New York also. Uh, T tell me your impressions of these guys uh, working with them. I, I mean, is it something uh, for, for Kurt and I, at least we could tell that they're New Yorkers just from, from watching them, you know, and, and being around people, uh, you know, like them often. Uh, what do you get from them? And, and how much are you looking at talent from New York City when you're looking to bring in new people? It's a great question, Dan. And I think they're, like you said, those guys are polar opposites. Every wrestler has a different personality. And it's kind of like comparing apples and oranges, comparing an MJF and an Eddie Kingston. Uh, but they're both great wrestlers. And uh, they're both from this great market where there's great fans. And they encapsulate, frankly, the different sides of the tracks. And that wrestling brings people from all walks of life together. And whether they have shared all the life experiences or not, there is a language that all wrestling fans speak. And uh, whether you're an obsessive fan who watches every Wednesday night and Friday night on TNT, or somebody who would just come in and check out a show, like, you know, there's so much exciting stuff happening in AEW right now. Uh, you know, I mentioned Brian Danielson versus Hangman Page and, and the story that's been building and the huge world title match coming up but also CM Punk versus MJF, who you just asked me about, is really uh, building up to be something uh, special whenever it happens. And every week we're seeing uh, something building between these two guys. And I can tell you as, as the matchmaker, the, the booker who puts the matches together, they'll wrestle and I can't wait. And what we're seeing between them is some of the best I think wrestling television, people have seen in a long time. On Thanksgiving day, I went on YouTube and uh, throughout the day, the top two trending videos in the world on Thanksgiving were the Macy's Parade and <laughs> CM Punk and MJF talking back and forth all day. They were the top two trending videos in the world. So uh, I think that's pretty, pretty great. And so, you know, with Danielson versus Paige and MJF versus Punk and all the exciting stories building and uh, the things we'll have on Long Island tomorrow, the new stars who've come into AEW, Adam Cole and Ruby Soho is free agent acquisitions. Uh, Adam Cole making his presence felt every week and every crowd loves doing the, the boom and the baby. And 
Ruby Soho, of course, is, is still one of the final four in the TBS championship tournament because Dynamite, you know, we're on TNT tomorrow and every Wednesday through the end of the year. And at the end of the year, it's the end of Dynamite on TNT. And we'll be moving to TBS for the future. And uh, so really, in many ways, the end of an era here, these final episodes on TNT of Dynamite, it's been the most special uh, thing in my life. And I, I really uh, treasure this run we've had on TNT. And I think there's a lot to come. And I promise so much left in these December episodes. We may be saving some of our best shows uh, for the last on TNT. So you heard it there. You heard it there first. And Tony, you, you have so much fun with all of this. You, it comes through whenever I hear you speak. You're having a great time. You know, I know you're a wrestling fan at heart and you're living a dream for a lot of wrestling fans themselves to have yeah. their own company. You can go out and sign, you know, whoever's available, whoever you want to bring in, and then you can make the matches yourself on top of that. I, just how much fun are you having right now? And how much do you take that responsibility seriously to just kind of, you know, give the fans what they want, but also maybe give them something they don't expect that they want? I take it super seriously. It's a great question, Kurt. And um, it is a dream come true to, to emphasize your point and illustrate your point, how right you are. Uh, my, I've been writing Dynamite since 1995 in like notebooks and Microsoft Word and even like in word processor programs on Windows that don't exist anymore, like Microsoft <laughs> Write. And uh, so Dynamite goes back to 95 and Rampage goes back to 2011, a 10 years, you know, for Rampage. And um, so I've had the ideas of doing these shows and, and building up a company for a long time. The name AEW came, came along in recent years, but Dynamite and Rampage, these shows we do every Wednesday and Friday on TNT uh, are ideas that, that I've had for a long time. And in my wildest dreams in the 90s and as a kid, never did I dream that if I ever became a wrestling promoter, my dream that it would be on TNT and TBS. Like that was so unrealistic that you wouldn't, I didn't even dream it. And like, so Dynamite and Rampage were never on TNT and TBS because that would be ridiculous. But, uh, you know, and now they actually are. So that's pretty amazing uh, to illustrate your point of how crazy this all is. Tony, what, what about, what about the on-screen character though? And, and, you know, obviously as the guy in charge, there's a, there's a history of, in other companies, the on-screen, the guy in charge being an on-screen character. How much, we, we've seen you, we, we've seen you a little bit. Are you interested in getting more involved in the, you know, storylines and, and stories you tell? Or? I think what you get every week on Dynamite and Rampage is a lot of great wrestling. And I take a lot of pride that when people watch Dynamite on Wednesday or when people watch Rampage on Friday night on TNT, that there's a ton of great wrestling. In a two-hour Dynamite, there's a lot of great wrestling matches. And in a one-hour Rampage, every week, we stuff that show with great wrestling. Other than the first dance, which was built around the arrival, the surprise, some, some, to something of a surprise, <laughs> the tease surprise of CM Punk coming in and his great promo, which was definitely the right choice I, to focus around that, and, and then still have some, some very good wrestling and come right in and have a great tag match with Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus versus Private Party. I think, uh, you know, that was... Uh, the only episode of Rampage really where we didn't stuff tons of wrestling into the hour. And right. I take a lot of pride that you, when, you, when you watch the, the show, it's, all, it's about wrestling. So, and when we do promos, they're about the wrestling. So I, I don't want to make the show about myself. And really, you do hear my name in terms of the matchmaking because I make the decisions. I, I book the matches and, and book the cards. So, you know, in that sense, you will hear my name being involved, but you don't need to see me or hear from me a lot on the TV show because that's trying to get as much great wrestling in the TV show as we possibly can, which is one of the reasons why we're building such a great audience with AEW and why we're gaining so much market share uh, because we have great wrestling. And one place we do hear a lot from you is on social media. And sometimes when we hear from you on social media, when you're not announcing matches and letting people know what's going on, you have not been shy about competing with and going up against WWE and going right up against them, especially we talk about something like even New York, running in a market where historically has been a stronghold for their company. And here you are but running another- May I another jump in, Kurt? May I? Yeah, please. I have a thought on what you're saying. Oh. Is it possible that when I, when I do, that I, you know, when I do talk about competing, 
I really am standing here minding my own business every single time, all these things you're talking about. I just came to run a show on Long Island and like, it's like, hey, you know, they jump into the front of the line, run a show ahead of me, try to beat me to market. Well, how did it work out? You try to compete like 30 minute window head to head uh, on Fox FS1 against TNT. And uh, I didn't make that choice for them to extend the broadcast by 30 minutes. Like I was very surprised to see it. My comments were genuine when I saw it. I've been like expecting something like that. And luckily uh, we had CM Punk and, and Ruby Soho and some great stars lined up to wrestle that week, or I might've had to change a card. And granted, uh, Matt Seidel, CM Punk's opponent, for example, not the biggest star in, in wrestling. The Bunny is a great wrestler and competed in the TBS uh, championship tournament. People really uh, mocked them. People said terrible things about Matt Seidel and the Bunny and, and, and about CM Punk and Ruby Soho. And we stood up for ourselves and had a great show. And we won the, the rating by a good amount, the demo. And uh, then I saw ratings getting leaked over the weekend. It wasn't from us. I wasn't the one leaking them. And then when the important numbers that the network actually looks came out Monday, we were victorious. And somebody tried to get out in front of us for days by leaking stuff. That wasn't AEW. So like all these things you're talking about, like usually we're sitting here minding our own business. And then it's like somebody does something, you know, that some person might call uh, very aggressive at worst. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, I would, I would say like when people make aggressive business moves, you got to stand up for yourself. And what's amazing is, you know, that people portray it as like, I'm coming out to compete when really like our shows are designed to just be there for the fans. Usually I don't try to put them on during other wrestling. I mean, we're on, you know, other nights. I mean, even the Wednesday night fight, which is obviously the most competitive era of this wrestling that went on for a while. It, it ended on April 14th, 2021. And uh, it went on since, you know, October of 2019. And in that time, I think there were like 77 head-to-head -head episodes. And I believe uh, we won the demo 76 to one. And uh, I think it was like 67 to 10 in the overall we won in the total viewership involved, you know, counting all ages, but in the key demo that the network looks at and ranks us by, it was like 76 to one. And uh, so, you know, that was not our choice to put the shows on head to head either. That was just the time slot I got assigned. So in all these cases, like we're just kind of doing our thing, standing up for ourselves and then uh, in promoting our show because we're forced into a competitive situation, you know, we come out swinging a bit, but uh, I think every time it's been the right move. He's gone. You you jumped to the end of my question before I got there, but I appreciate it. That's exactly <laughs> well, I knew where you were going. And yeah, so no, rather than... <laughs> Rather than waste our time, Kurt. No, no, no. I thought, like, no, hey, it's a good man. point. I see where you're going with it. Yeah, but you, like I, I said, you've been, you've done your thing. You've stayed in your lane. You've done what you wanted to do, and let them. They have reacted to it, and I think it's important to mention that that you that you just done what you were going to do anyway. There's been no change to that. It's just you're doing your yeah. best. We are going to run UPS tomorrow night, Wednesday night Dynamite. Uh, before I knew there was another show lined up there, we were. Gonna put on that great card with uh, Punk versus Seidel, so mm -hmm. versus the Bunny mm -hmm. uh, on Rampage, and uh, you know we were going to run a great two-hour show every Wednesday night, whether there was a show up against us, and now there's not. And all these times, like you know, I've been happy. Uh, like I said, these aren't fights I've asked for, but when right. they were brought to the table, I was more than happy to participate in them. And uh, so. It's been it's been it's fun for the fans and it's great because there's now there's two really successful wrestling companies again and for 20 years we didn't have that so it's I think it's great for the fans. Tony, I was just literally about to say that. I mean, I know you have a, obviously a lot of your working is also in sports and football and soccer, so you're obviously a, a competitive guy. But I mean, some of the best moments of my wrestling fandom of my life was what in the early mid 90s flipping back and forth before we had remote controls and before we had DVR, it was, you know, raw and nitro. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that was some of the best memories talking to your friends while you're going back and forth. So, so why isn't there room for two, three, four wrestling companies? I mean, bring on the, the as much wrestling as possible. I mean, am I wrong in saying that this is helping the ultimate product, the competition? Yeah, I think it's great for the fans. I mean, what's yeah. happening right now is in the last couple of years, 
years, we've seen a rise in the popularity of pro wrestling. Uh, there have been all kinds of news outlets and articles about it, and the competition has has helped that. And uh, I don't actually have, you know, I like I said, it's healthy competition. It's sports. I mean, the stuff we've said about each other, uh, the, the, you know, the, the AEW and WWE and the stuff I've said, it's child's play compared to what goes on in the NFL and, and in English. Like, you know, it's fun, but the wrestling media uh, will get up in arms about it. But good Lord, like, uh, you know, you should hear uh, the, some of the quotes in football after the games. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, everything with AEW is is, is a, a mostly well-received. There are some who have problems with the product and the company. I mean, you, I'm sure you've heard, you know, what people like Jim Cornette have had to say. You no, know, Jim Cornette has Cornette. like, you know, Jim Cornette has I know, like he's seven gotten better. of the he's last like 12 more. Dynamites. He's like, he's like, like seven more of the last 12 shows. So you can't say he hates the show because I think he's actually like, you know, when he picks stuff apart, he's very vocal. But I believe it's <laughs> like something like, he's like more than he hasn't liked out of the last... And he's like like four out of the last five a lot, I think. So uh, it's you know that's something to keep an eye on. So are you listening? Are you listening to what he, what he's saying? Are you? I get it into of of like what most it? major influencers in wrestling say and keep an eye on him. I don't like listen to everything he says, but he was like a major influence on me, like growing up in wrestling. So I do. I, I don't take everything he says to heart, and I think some of his opinions are ridiculous, but I also think he thinks a lot of my opinions are ridiculous. So there's a lot of room for that in wrestling. And, um, and but I do, you know, with him and a lot of the major media people in wrestling get a report. Um, they used to call it when Vince got the Finkel report, and uh, Finkel isn't putting mine together, um, but I get you know, from various sources that are knowledgeable wrestling people uh give me a lot of data about what's happening in the world of wrestling and including uh what some opinion uh, opinionated and, and opinion columns and uh podcasts and all kinds of stuff tony obviously the roster in the last year in the last six months in the last couple months it has grown so we went from obviously when you guys started there was you saw a lot of the people because there wasn't as uh, you know basically what i'm getting at is now when guys are available, it's not such a quick, you know, take me to the process of, you know, you, you got main event guys. You got a lot of main event guys. You, I mean, you got a, basically a, a whole card full of main event guys. How do you kind of uh, move it forward now when you have a pretty stacked roster compared to maybe two years ago when you weren't in this spot? It's a good problem to have, clearly, but how do you kind of meet it? It's a great question, Dan. I think it means more great pay-per-view matches and more exciting main events for the fans. There are so many more main event possibilities than there were when we started. There's so many great stars who've come into AEW. When you look at just in the last year in, in, in change, you've had CM Punk and Brian Danielson, Ruby Soho, Thunder Rosa, Adam Cole, Sting, right. Christian Cage, and so many others come into AEW. So uh, with the with free agency, uh, I, you know, it's brought a lot of new huge main events. Uh, like I said, we're building towards a match nobody would have thought was possible. Hangman Page is the world champion. Uh, that took a lot of people by surprise, I think, from where we started because he's a homegrown star who's been built. Uh, he had a great run as a world tag team champion with Kenny Omega. We built towards a great dream match that was a huge huge success for us. And now Hangman Page, a world champion, taking on Brian Danielson. Who would have ever thought Hangman versus Brian Danielson would be a possibility as a world title match? And now CM Punk versus MJF. Uh, you know, maybe uh, Adam Cole and Orange Cassidy, potentially. There's a lot of uh, big matches out there now that we're, we're starting to see uh, teased or being built towards. And I think it's really exciting. And the women's uh, division also right. with the TBS championship tournament. That's been the best women's tournament in wrestling in a very long time, I think. Looking ahead, this is going to be a very exciting time for you in the next couple of weeks and stuff with everything going on with the shows like you mentioned here. You have different networks also that you have to be considering as the shows are moving to TBS and so forth with everything well, that's happening. Dynamite's moving to TBS, Dynamite's but Rampage, Rampage is staying on TNT. To all that point, with everything that's coming up in the next couple of weeks and being excited about what's going on here, just one more time for everybody, just iterate what the fans can expect to see at Long Island this week and then in the coming weeks ahead as we move into 2022. 
Thanks, Kurt. Uh, we've got a huge AEW Dynamite tomorrow night, Wednesday night Dynamite. It's on TNT uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern. If, uh, if you're watching at home and if you want to come out, there's still some tickets left, but we are pushing towards a sellout, which is really exciting. And, and 10,000 fans at UBS Arena, which is amazing for our debut on Long Island. And uh, to come up to New York and keep getting this great support, it's amazing. We're going to have Brian Danielson, arguably the best wrestler in the world. I think maybe one of the best wrestlers of all time, wrestling against John Silver, who is one of the most popular young wrestlers in AEW and one of the most popular young wrestlers anywhere. And he happens to be from Long Island, and he's going to have great support tomorrow night. And also on Wednesday night, Dynamite, we have the Dynamite Diamond Battle Royal. Uh, MJF has yes. won this two years in a row, and he's going to be in it defending against a huge lineup of great competition, including uh, Team Taz and Leo Rush uh, and Dante Martin of Team Taz now, which has been an exciting story. And MJF's own bodyguard, Wardlow, is in this. And a lot of great stars. That'll be a very exciting match. Uh, ahead of Rio wrestling for the women's world title against Dr. Brett Baker. She's going to wrestle Dr. Brett Baker's good friend, Jamie Hayter. And uh, also very excited to see the Young Bucks, maybe the best tag team of all time and one of the great tag teams in AEW in this great division. Uh, we have the Young Bucks wrestling against two members of Chaos and the best friends. Uh, Rocky Romero and Chuck Taylor with Orange Cassidy. So I, I'm really excited. And, and the Young Bucks are going to have Adam Cole, who I mentioned, one of the great free agent gets recently for AEW, one of the biggest stars in wrestling in their corner. So it, it's going to be a huge night. And there's a lot more uh, we'll add in the, in the coming hours ahead of this big card. But it's, it's coming up so soon. Uh, we're getting set up over at the arena now. And, uh, you know, we try to put a big show on every Wednesday night, but when we come up to here in New York, uh, it's that much more exciting. It's that much more pressure to do a great show for, for these great fans in New York.